You don't see it, do you? How close you are to absolute chaos? They're sitting on their fat masses, eating and drinking themselves into a stupor, polluting the world without a second thought while it goes down the toilet. Nobody wants to do the nasty work. You know, the shit that we all just think about. Most good citizens are just along for the ride and they bitch and moan and complain about everything when it doesn't work out. Get it, guys. Revolution right here. Where we do the nasty work. Realize you're caught in a dream. The adventure begins. Put your seat back and treat it as the upright position as we take a trip in the very fabric of reality. Join me, Andrew Bartz, for Adventures in Reality. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, 10 a.m. to 12 noon at Resolution Radio at freedomslips.com where information never sleeps. information to assist you in confidently living through just about any survival situation. The survival from gardening, off-grid living, medical knowledge, or even natural or man-made EMPs on your list of personal concerns, you have your documents and your personal information in a safe place in your hands where you know where it is. Well, check out our preloaded EMP thumb drive. Over three gigs of survival documents and how-tos, plus the USDA offline food preservation website, and much, much more, including a surprise bonus we just can't tell you about. With plenty of room left over to store your most important documents. Imagine if a mega virus or computer failure took out your bank, or all the banks for that matter, or your bank is safe in your hands. So when they get things fixed and repaired, you can say, hey, look, this is what I had. You have it. I want it back. Is your personal data safe? Family records, addresses, phone numbers, squeeze on over to freedomslips.com. Yes, that's www.freedomslips.com. Click the banner on the homepage for the EMP proof bullet drive to get the full scoop of everything that we offer. So, folks, keep your data safe for your peace of mind. Revolution Rate, freedomslips.com. You don't need to expect us, we're already here. <laughs> Radio. You're listening to Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, 100% listener supported radio, and now we return you to your host. <laughs> And I am Clay Douglas. I am the Free American. I have been doing this for a long time. And, folks, I've written books about it. That uh, Those books are available up on my website. And uh, you can read a copy today. You can get the PDF simply by sending a donation through PayPal to clay at freeamerican.com. Or send me an email telling me why you can't afford to give up that six-pack of beer to understand what's happening in the patriot movement and by the way my i've got fiction out which are more believable than my non-fiction and <laughs> my non-fiction is mystery babylon the new world order unveiled 500 pages of history with the history of the rothschild the history of the bankster set up in this country the wars they've started the and we go back a couple of thousand years to uh, to the Bible and tell you about the Jews who say they're Jews but are not, says Jesus, not me, are of the synagogue of Satan and 
kind of what we're facing today. My guest today is Ed Snook. He's a U.S. observer, investigators, reporters, publishers. And uh, Ed, you you mentioned Carl Klang. Now, I, I've used Carl's music uh, as introductions to a lot of my radio shows. I told him one time, you know, Carl, I'm kind of jealous of you. You know, you do more in three minutes. You get more information out in three minutes than I can get out in a whole magazine sometimes. How is Carl doing? Now, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, the last time I, I, it's been a long time since I've talked to him. And, uh, you know, you're just, what's that? You just can come back. You just came back into me. I, I didn't hear much of what you just said. Okay. Well, I was, uh, let's pull that. How's that? How's that, Mike? Uh, is that Mike doing any better, guys? Yeah, I can, uh, I can hear you fine now. Okay. The, uh, I, I said I was kind of jealous of, I told Carl one time I was jealous of him because he could say more than three minutes in, uh, in a song than, uh, than I, could, uh, I could get in a whole magazine uh, sometimes or a whole article. But uh, what? how's he doing? Uh, he just disappeared and uh, he, he, uh, he lost his family as I did. He, uh, he, and he just kind of disappeared. I haven't, uh, I haven't heard from him and haven't been able to get a hold of him for years now. I'm glad to know that he's all right. Do you know what happened to him? You know, I do. He, I won't get into the family deal, but he was, uh, lost his family, had some, a lot of personal problems and, He's just, he's called me from time to time, and he's just starting to sound like the old Carl again. He was, uh, in fact, he's, if, if you want to call me at another time, I'd be happy to give you his number. I'm yeah, sure, sure he'd like to hear from you. Sure. But well, he's, uh, he's doing good right now. All the, the stuff behind him, I'm, he, and that goes back to what I was starting to talk about I, I started watching you know Bob Reich and some of these people and and how being involved in this patriot world was affecting them and I, I'm sure you know all the prevails about Bo and his family and and I, I started watching all these these things going on and I I just took a charted a different course for myself I I kind of uh Split the patriot world up. You know, I saw the. There's a lot of bad that goes on in the patriot world. It's not all good. There's a lot of this conspiracy stuff is is just absolutely BS. You know, some of it's very legitimate. Uh, but I just uh, I I chose a different route. I. You know, while I still, DB Kid still writes for me, we're very dear friends to this day. I, I stayed away from a lot of that and the, uh, well, back during the tank movement and for John Troutman and those guys were big on that. I was around when, uh, you'll remember the, the Montana Freeman. Yes. They were, there, there's so much. Old Schweitzer, remember Leroy Schweitzer and his Montana Freeman? I interviewed Leroy uh, before they raided him. Yes. Yeah. Well, what they were doing, some of these people were lying to the public. In fact, Leroy was. He was misrepresenting court documents. <clears throat> the Eminger case telling people they could start these common law courts. And I, I agreed that they were going around to all these... Uh, ranchers out here in the west you know having big meetings and and providing these tenth circuit uh court papers that which was an eminger appeal i don't know if you ever saw that but he would I, I was in dc one time with a bunch of uh, patriots and 
came back in my editor. Don Harkins was my editor at the time. I got him into this stuff, and I know he had Don. Got into swipes. You know Don. I I knew Don. Yes. Yeah, very dear friend of mine that passed away a while back, but he I got Don out of the Oregonian. He he would work for the Eastern Oregonian, and I got him into all this world and. Anyway, when I was gone back in D.C., Don was out here at a Schweitzer meeting and got sucked in. He became a clerk, and he, I'll never forget, I got back, pulled into the office from D.C., from the airport, and went in there, and I was ready to tell him all this fantastic people I'd met, and he didn't hear a word I'd said. He said, Ed, I did what you told me. I, I got the court documents, and we've started our common law court. And I said, he said, here to sell. He went and got me this Eminger appeal. And he, he didn't, he failed to read the last sentence. It, it was a, an appeal on a o Oklahoma, Texas case. I think it was Oklahoma I, by this Leroy Eminger. And the last sentence in the document said that the uh, opinion of the lower court is affirmed, meaning that they ruled against the common law court. And I said, did you read this? Boy, Don turned beat red, and he said, man, Ed, I have never been so deceived in my life. And so a lot of these things, and then I got with Red Beckman and uh, started investigating Schweitzer and and started learning about all the ranchers and, and different ones that were in prison and and uh, mental hospitals for for uh, leaning judges and doing all this crazy stuff. <clears throat> and it, I saw these all these attempts by, by good people that they're, they were just rife for someone to come in and deceive them and make money off of them. And I, to a point, that's what Deb Swan's doing. She's coming in to good people. No doubt Charles Dyer has, he's got a wonderful family. He's got some wonderful supporters. Some of the guys that he's have been trying to help him are as good as the gifts. But you always have this little element that comes in and tries to make money off of it and deceive people. And I, I guess I yeah, well a good way to say it, Clay, is my mother used to tell me, Why don't you write something good in your paper? And I said, I don't do that, Mom. I I'm handling the bad stuff, what's going on wrong if I'm, I'm not for everybody. You know, the people that uh, want to know bad, whether it's about the ones that are around or the ones that are uh, uh, a danger to them, that's what I do. If they want, there's plenty of Christian magazines and, and entertainment out there. It's, it's endless. You can go find, find that if that's what you're into. All right, Ed, let, anyway, me, I, let, me, let me interrupt you for just a second. I've got another caller on the line. I brought uh, Rick Lyde on. Hello, Rick. We've been talking about you about an hour. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, uh, somehow or another, my phone got mysteriously turned off this morning, and I was wondering, you know, hey, I haven't heard from Clayton yet. So I came in and discovered my phone was off, turned it back on. Um, I actually turned it on this morning at 6.30, put it in the window. But, oh, uh, well, that's become... Uh, kind of habitual with anything that's been scheduled uh, well, as far as talk radio. That's all right, show, because so. uh, I, I had scheduled Ed Snook with uh, U.S. Observer, and uh, he's, uh, say hi to Ed. We've just been talking about this whole Deb Swan, how she was attacking you, how she attacked him. We covered that in the first hour. Now we're kind of talking about the whole patriot movement in, uh, in general. And by the way, uh, and I, you know, you're you're right. I mean, John Trotman, he stopped out. He 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 dropped out, and I asked him why. Why, John? He said, you know, Clay, we tried to tell him about the, uh, we tried to tell him about uh, NAFTA. We tried to tell him about GATT. We tried to tell him about FEMA. We tried to tell him about the Federal Reserve. They wouldn't listen to us. They wouldn't support us then. They won't support us now. So the hell with them. They're going to get the government they deserve. And he's talking about the American people being so damn dumbed down. And the Patriot Movement, after my accident, 
after I spent four months in the hospital with a three-quarter million dollar hospital bill for three broken ribs, I was pretty disgusted with the Patriot Movement, too. And you mentioned Bo Greitch. Well, Bo, uh, he, uh, he hated me because I kind of blew the whistle on uh, uh, so a woman that he was uh, supporting that was uh, talking about her uh, husband took away her children and uh, was uh, molesting them. I, it turns out that this woman was the one that sexualized the kids, and that's probably the one uh, who's uh, caused uh, Bo's wife to shoot him. I don't believe he tried to commit suicide. And uh, he says, but Bo says, I saved Randy Weaver. Well, that's kind of true, but you could also say that Bo arrested Randy Weaver for the FBI. The FBI sent him in there. They sent him into the... Uh, uh, the Montana Freeman, and then they uh, sent him out to find Eric Rudolph, too. So, who's the good guys in the Patriot Movement, anyway? And uh, Rick, uh, maybe uh, say hello to Ed, and uh, maybe between the two of you, I, I've told everybody that you, Rick Light, is doing the militias right. You're doing the militias the way I started my the militia in New Mexico in governor, the governor's office. And that governor just ran for president on the Libertarian Party. And uh, you're doing it with your sheriff. And I think that's the right way to do it. And the sheriff, the constitutional sheriffs out there that Richard Mack is pushing are, I think, our last hope. Now, I'm going to kind of turn it over and let you guys uh, uh, talk. Uh, Ed, would you like to respond to my comments about Bo Greitch first? And then uh, we'll, we'll hear from Rick. You know, you're, hi, Rick, how are you? Uh, I'm just fine. And Mr. Snook, I want to thank you so much for the help you provided the Dyer family. Uh, that family is, as we all know, has been through Cain, systematically drained of their finances to even defend their son. Um, throw my hats off to you. Uh, uh, debt I, as Charles' friend and his brother, probably can't never repay, but we really, really appreciate what you're doing for the Dyer family, sir. You're, you're more than welcome, and we're going to finish the job, so good to, good good to finally uh, talk with you. Yeah, same here. Uh, I've been uh, kind of looking forward to the show this morning, and uh, I was a little theft, you might say, that my phone was off, but that's okay. It's back on now. Uh, we're here. And, uh, you know, I hope that people will really stop and think of what it would be like to be convicted on hearsay and then sentenced to 30 years. I mean, that's, and I, I can't even imagine how I would feel right now being in Charles' shoes. Yeah, this is a real problem. It needs to be repaired. But we intend to repair it, so we probably would have had it repaired as you talked about this one time came on that we would have probably had him out of prison by now had Swan and and these others not gotten involved and, and uh, ruined our investigation. So we're going to... Have you already yeah, I know. Carl? Well, yeah, Charles is know, an we a, yeah, we had a really good support base built up and due to, uh, well, uh, Swan and others that uh, got on the on Debbie Swan's bandwagon there and go around and basically try to discredit all of us that were helping uh, in the name of trying to draw attention to herself. I noticed that Clayton's got another letter up from a uh, lady by the name of Remick Lewis, and she seems to be insinuating that, well, that letter that I gave Clayton, well, it's not authentic. Well, Clayton got all five pages of that letter, plus the envelope. If he wanted to put all five pages, he could. Uh, I am familiar with uh, Miss Lewis, and uh, she's pretty emotionally unstable. Number one, 
number two, uh, I thought that she was actually one of my friends and tell, well, she wanted me to support something that distracted me away from the militia cause. And it's like I told her that, you know, good luck with Mr. Stu Webb. I haven't got nothing against Stu Webb. Um, I just, there's, there's some things about Mr. Webb that don't add up. You know, I questioned him on the Oklahoma City bombing. What Mr. Webb didn't understand is I do have people that investigated that um, that are very close friends of mine. Ron Cross uh, from Oklahoma City was actually on the investigation with the uh, Oklahoma City bombing from the militia side of the fence. Uh, I questioned Mr. Webb on some things. He couldn't answer the questions. So when he couldn't answer the questions, I realized that his information about Oklahoma City, well, was conjunctive at best. And uh, so I just went on my own way. Now, does that mean Stu Webb's wrong or bad or anything? I don't know, man. I'm not going to say anything about Mr. Webb. God bless him for everything that he does, the information he puts out there, all the power to him. Uh, but it just wasn't my cup of tea. Well, Miss Remick Lewis seemed to get very upset over this. All of a sudden, I was the bad guy. So if anybody wants to look at the letters, they're both Carl's letters. They're both the same writing. Pay attention to the signature at the bottom. That Semper Fi is, would be very hard to copy. Um, Carl's writes a lot of people letters. He tries to do the best he can to answer anybody that supports him. So, folks, get them letters in there. Let's stand up with this Marine and let's get him out of this mess. There's no sense of all the bickering and argument, arguing between patriots about Charles Dyer. It seems to me like, well, those that support Trump put his support first. His support should come first. Not their personal agendas. Now, Mrs. Dyer has asked this many times. Many times. She has asked patriots, quit inviting, concentrate on what needs to be done. And I've always sided with Mama on that one. If you notice, I do call her Mama Dyer. Uh, Mrs. Dyer will have no problem. I, she actually told me and my wife that we're her adopted, we're adopted children. That's how much she thinks about it. So look, we're going to come out swinging. We're going to come out swinging hard. My advice to uh, Deborah Swan, Remick Lewis, whoever. Now, when you're out there spreading trash, trying to discredit other patriots, trying to help Charles, you're hurting his support. Grow up. Get over it. Move forward. That's my advice to you. The adults. You're supposed to be grown adults. You're acting like preteen kids. Get over it and move forward. I agree with agree that. More. I agree with that. And, uh, the, you know, this is what's happened. You know, the, the, as far as I'm concerned, anybody that's trying to trash people that are doing something here, uh, you know, you're 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 right, Stu Webb. I, I don't agree with everything Stu says, but he's put out some good information. He tries, and Remick, she just she's a little stressed out. She's got uh, uh, she's a run afoul of the banks, or her son has. So, uh, you know, I don't have anything against Remick. I uh, I took off her name off of the letter that uh, compared and. Uh, Again, just as a, re as a request, and uh, but the the letter that uh, she got from Charles, it matches the eyes match the uh, the simplify matches. So yes, I believe and and I I love the letter that I posted on my website regarding you, Rick, written uh, that uh, you know <laughs> no no evidence that you're a brain eating uh, uh, alien. <laughs> <laughs> but and and another yeah. evidence that either one of my guests are feds. We are here's what we all are, folks. You've got three people on this show right now that have been working for for years, for years and years, 
just trying to do the right thing for the American people to support our Constitution. I took an oath back in 1964 to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I've been trying to do that. And anybody like these trolls on the Internet that's trying to put us down, trying to distract, trying to, to, to shift the focus from what we're trying to do here, they're, they're the bad guys. They're, uh, and I just refer to them as idiots. I don't know whether they're just stupid or whether they are actually being paid. And they bragged about this. I've had Gordon Duff on my show several times that have, uh, and, and he has confirmed that, uh, the Mossad is, you know, that's the same thing as Al Qaeda. The Mossad and the CIA are bringing the drugs into this country. This ain't conspiracy theories. This is what our military People like Colonel Edward P. Catolo, who's a subject in uh, one chapter in my book, Mystery Babylon. He's told us he said uh, that George Bush was covering for the uh, Mossad and the CIA to bring tons of cocaine into this into this country. That's our real problems. And you 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 found that too, haven't you guys? So you guys lost. Ed, go I don't know about I don't know about any of these uh, people you've been talking about. I I can back if you go back twenty twenty five years. That's that's when I was into the Patriot world. I guess I still am. I I still communicate. DB Kid writes for me. Uh, like I say, I I still had uh, I had a conversation with Clang the last during the last about three or four conversations during the last month. But I, uh, I've kind of been out of, I've got one deal. I, I, I didn't stay with that. You know, that fact, I don't even know about this letter, these people you're talking about. I, I've been, uh, busy getting 4,200 people out of false criminal charges from rape, kidnap, murder, racketeering. And that's what I do. I destroy bad people in government and do a good job of it. And, you guys appear to have carried on and doing a good job at this other stuff, but I, I don't want to sound stupid. I just, I just have not been following all this. When after NAFTA and GATT, uh, I guess that was that turned a, turned a bunch of people. I I feel like Troutman, you know, that the the American people are the problem. They're ignorant, and they're going to have to get hurt. There's, uh, it's like we, we handle a, a lot of tax evasion cases. And when people listen to all these magical answers that you don't have to pay your taxes, once they get indicted, then a, a lot of them come to me. How do we get out of this, Ed? Well, they, first of all, you shouldn't have listened to the people that told you that. They fed you full of crap and know nothing about our court system. You're up against a police power that you live in a virtual we live in a virtual police state and there's no getting around that anyway i, I haven't been where you guys have been the last 10 years anyway so a lot of this stuff is uh, i've been focusing on fine-tuning our machines here and 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 destroying bad people that like Swan and others, and which I will do with her here shortly. Uh, I just had a different focus. I I didn't get out like Troutman. I, I I just focused on what I was doing, and I didn't. I stayed away from any type of conspiracy. You know, I I've got we got 27 cases, criminal cases going right now. So I don't have time to anymore anyway, and and uh, but it's something. This information is a lot of it's stuff that needs to be heard, and I just happen to be uh, in a unique position where I don't have time to hear a lot of it. So I don't. Uh, um, Rick, we've actually talked a little bit about this last night, Mister Snook, on another show. Um, look. It's a combination of everybody working on what they're passionate about. Because in the end of this, it will all add up. 
it'll all come together on the same highway. It's like I try to tell people. Some of us are on different roads, but all those roads lead to the same highway, and that highway being the highway of freedom and liberty again for America. And God bless you for what you're doing, Mr. Snook, because that really needs to be looked at. Charles Dyer's case isn't the only case out there of injustice by no means. Our court systems have fell apart. Lawyers now don't think about your justice and liberty. They think about, well, do you got a do you got a big enough bank account that you can hire me? And when that starts happening, well, justice is going to suffer immensely. This gives the courts the opportunity to start changing things, folks. You gotta remember. For every person they put in prison or can get in the system, that's just more money they get to take from your back pocket. Our court systems have become a financial monopoly, and they they got no problem with destroying people's lives in order to get what they want. Now, that's what it's all boiled down to, and that's not a conspiracy theory. Anybody that gets locked and gets into the system anymore with the courts, finds out what I just said to be the facts. I'm like Mr. Shelley. I don't like to dwell in conspiracy theories. That's what gave me the edge with the militia movement. You know, the militia movement, I keep trying to tell my militia brothers and sisters out there, look, watch your information you're spreading. Make sure it's credible. The reason the militia movement suffers is because we get so many people that want to dwell in conspiracy theories, they want to dwell in hate and anger, they're not stopping to think about what they're saying in public, and look folks, the government scares people enough, they really do, now, now the people are getting scared from the other end of the spectrum, and that's the militia movement people, now not all of them are like that, I've come across some really great militia-minded people, I mean, impeccable people, and uh, I'm fortunate to be working with them. Look, folks, if you want your nation back, you're going to have to get up. You're going to have to do something. You, you can't just sit on the couch and expect Mr. Snook to do his end, me to do my end, Clayton to do his end without support. You've got to get behind these people. You've got to help them out. Now, Charles Dyer, if we can get Charles Dyer free, that's just more mark in freedom. One more step in freedom and justice that we make. I know some people are saying, well, you know, he was convicted for baby rape, and, we'll, and they won't even give it the time of day. The problem is, is those people won't even read the court transcripts. Nothing. They won't look into nothing. Well, he was convicted. That's good enough. Well, one of these days, you may find yourself there, and you're going to see the light the hard way. Now, Mr. Snook's working where we create an avenue where these court systems are going to be afraid to do this to you if you'll support that cause. Another good cause for the Patriot Movement is the militia. Not that it's a war machine. Look, militia is a, a community service. It, it's a bunch of people that get together, they train really well with firearms and stuff to defend freedom and liberty from all enemies, foreign and domestic. They should have a community-based message. Community People are looking for, for this kind of stuff, too. They're really looking for an answer to the problem. The problem is, is that the militia, some of the militia out there, are so angry, they don't watch the rhetoric, they want to spout off war and stuff. Well, here's the government scaring them on this end, now here's the militia scaring them on this end. They're caught in the middle, and they don't know which way to go. Now, people wonder why I've made the marks I've made. It ain't because I'm a fed, folks. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I live way in the middle of nowhere. And if I was a fed, and if I had bad intentions for the militia, my message would be completely different. I'd be trying to get you to do something bad that would compromise yourself. 
That's what I'd be getting. That's what I'd be doing. That's what they do. When they send in infiltrators, that's what those infiltrators do. They send you the wrong direction. My message is clear. Look, start giving people hope. Watch how you present yourself. I tell people all the time, you know, it's not the fact we're militia that's troubling. It's our presentation of the militia that's troubling. And this has to be repaired. Just like our court systems have to be repaired. So that's what I'm trying to tell folks. Look, you want to get some credibility out there, give people hope. Give them an avenue that, look, you know, there are people who care. And because I've had this attitude, folks, I've got the backing of county commissioners, my county judge, my sheriff, and my deputies. I'm also a commander in the Texas State Militia. And let me tell you something. The Texas State Militia is a very professional crew, and we're growing like you won't believe because of it. You should see the smile on people's faces when they learn about us. They're like, wow, that gives us hope that somebody cares. I want and you to, I want you to. That, because of that, I now have a platform to stand on uh, um, to help. I've got a sheriff to help me get with these other sheriffs. Folks, you guys are fixing to see the Texas Citizens Militia be re reborn in Texas. And it was because I used a smile on my face. I used what you would call common sense, professional conversation between my county electives. I didn't have to scream war. I didn't have to dwell on Agenda 21, none of that stuff, folks. I just kept it down to the brass tacks. And you know what the greatest part of the whole deal was? I never had to kneel, and I didn't have to beg. And this can be done over and over and over again across America. You know, for 23 years, I've been in the militia movement for 23 years. Folks, I've watched its ups and downs. Well, when you see things that are broke, you got to fix them. If something's not working, you got to find another way. And let's face it, screaming war doesn't work. Here again, you got the government on this end, scaring the cane out of people, and here comes the opposite end, you're scaring them more. You're going to have to give people a way to get involved, instead of holding you back because of your what, you, what your presentation is. Now, anybody that, that knows anything about business, uh, anything along those lines is going to tell you, you know, Mr. Light's right. I mean, look at Hollywood. Would you go watch a movie that has a poor presentation on, on when it airs on TV, you know, the advertisement about movies? No. They give you enough juice there to where you're going to get up and want to go to the theaters and watch that movie. We have to do the same thing. Well, Rick, I, I agree. Thing. Our presentation has to become to where we're it, it, it's viable for the people to listen. I agree with uh, your approach, and I, you know, just like I back Sheriff Richard Mack and his uh, Constitutional uh, Sheriffs and Police Officers Association, we need this. We don't need to. The whole Occupy movement was like another psychological operation to make you afraid of the police, or the and. and uh, to separate us from them, doing us and them, divide and conquer is what they use. But I want to, I want to talk uh, uh, just a moment, Ed. You know, I appreciate what you're doing because our, uh, to me, our whole judicial system needs to be reformed. Ann Rand had it right when she said, "Government has no control over honest citizens, so they have to make criminals out of us." And I believe that's what the whole drug laws, tax laws. Uh, you know, the IRS uh, 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 debate, I mean, the IRS is working for the banksters, and so are the CIA and the Mossad. They're bringing the drugs in here. They're laundering it through the banks. And how do we clear that up? I mean, how do we get, uh, how do we get the law enforcement to investigate themselves? How do we deal with this? This ain't a conspiracy. I did time in Texas 
45 years ago when it was a life sentence, practically 99 years for possession of marijuana, and I had some marijuana. I did time there, and I wrote uh, I wrote books that'll be released this year. It took me 45 years to finish them about the United States in a future time when laws against victimless crimes had been abolished, and we had a different society. And I, hopefully, those books will be released and uh, out later this year. Uh, I, I also said that they, they actually, the whole free trade thing is a way to solve all of the problems, to solve the drug problems uh, in this country, abolish all the lies against victimless crimes, tear down that wall between us and Mexico, replace it with tables, and let the, uh, let the Mexicans and the Colombians and the Panamanians bring all their cocaine, all their heroin, all their marijuana, set it on a table and uh, let Americans buy it and walk away with it. If they want to kill themselves shooting heroin, let them. Do it over there, do it over there beside that pit there so we can just dump the body in. And, uh, why should we have to pay $50,000 a year to house illegal aliens, to, hire, hire, to, to house somebody for smoking a joint or snorting a line of coke? Why do we need to do that? Is that making the, the even the officers, even our police officers have said that the, the, the drug war is a joke and we don't need it. I'd like to get your opinions on that, Ed. I'm enjoying this, you guys. I, I've, uh, it's the first talk show I've been on for years and I, I've, uh, if you want my opinion on, I would do the very same thing. I would. We, our, our court system has turned into a, I don't know that we can fix it. I, we may have to start over. It's turned into an absolute heartless money-making cesspool. And it's, I mean, it's, it's some of the people, it, like Rick was saying earlier about, it's like if people would read Dyer's uh, transcript, if they'd read his court papers, he went into court with no three trials it took to convict this guy. And the third trial, he got a, a, an attorney named Hawk out there, Oak, that absolutely presented nothing meaningful. The guy ought to be in, I, if I was running things, I'd put his attorney in prison for sending him down the river. Uh, but that's, you know, on the drugs, let people have their damn drugs. Open up a, a a uh, in every county get a big building, uh, very simple and cheap to produce the drugs. Let people have all they want. Just make sure that they you've got two doors. They have to be clean and sober before they're going out the back door, or they go, they stay there. If they're going to overdose, they let them overdose. Get them up off my, where I'm not paying to. Uh, house them. They're not out stealing. You know, there's simple ways to fix all this stuff and and government, you know, it's it's it, it's almost like we're living the uh the beginning of America all over again. You know, we government isn't working. It's not serving my happiness or you guys. <clears throat> government is gone. You know, we think we've got a Congress People ignorantly think that we can affect our congressmen and oh, write them letters. The congressmen come and go, the presidents come and go. That administrative government is what's running this country. And, and you can, the bankers, you can say whoever you want is directing all this, which a lot of that's factual. But our, our country, what I'm talking about today, when I talk to groups once in a while, I'll go talk to them we're facing, we've let our, our country go. We've got one world order. We've got, you know, and how many of these county movements, I I know uh, Mac and all these guys, and I, believe me, I support our sheriff. I got him elected here. Uh, but the, when it comes down to it, they, they're, it's so, the monster is so big out there, uh, 
you know, I'm all for efforts, but I'll tell you what, it's, I've almost, I've almost come to the opinion that, uh, until the people are hungry, until they can't fill up their grocery carts and, uh, waddle back home, you know, day in and day out, we're, uh, this country is no longer the country that they don't recognize the Constitution. Our Supreme Court, they don't know the Constitution. Our own government has tore our Constitution to hell. It's, there's nothing in our Constitution that even resembles it anymore, hardly. Uh, if I could tell you guys some of the stuff that's going on in these courts that, like, stripping jury trials out west here. It's absolute, people wouldn't believe me. And I sit and watch this stuff, and I say, man, God, people wouldn't even believe this is happening. And it, I'll tell you, it's, uh, yeah, the, the drugs, give them all they want. If people, if people could really get a vision, which you mention money anymore, and they've been so dumbed down they can't, now they're accepting accepting billions and trillions of dollars and just turning their head the other way. That you know that ignorant people in government, uh, thieving people in government in our court system, honestly are not my problem. My problem are the American people that sit on their butt and don't do anything. That let other people do their work for them, and and that was a big part of my not getting into these issues about 15 years ago i just i saw i had to get away from them because they were taking up all my time i was and i had tons of friends in the militias back then i was right in the middle of stuff when they the militias went to corky and all those guys and troutman went to congress and i they just kept spending their entire lives trying to wake people up and it wasn't working. And I'll tell you, maybe there's, you know, I, I hate to be a negative person, but, you know, today maybe things will be different. Maybe a fresh set of people will get things, go ahead and in, the, in a better direction. But I, I can't, I just don't see, uh, I just don't see repairing, and, and believe me, I'm in the news, I publish the news, I'm watching these sheriffs uh, stand up, and I'm not seeing it, I watch these same sheriffs uh, out here in the West is where it's predominant, in Oregon, California, and, uh, and some of these Western states, I know these sheriffs, and I'm, I'm watching them talk about Standing up for the second minute, we're not gonna, we're not going to, uh, uphold any uh, unconstitutional federal law. And then the next day, they go right out and confiscate a miner's claim or, or kick a rancher off his property because he's getting screwed by, a, uh, by government, by unconstitutional property tax. And I, you know, I've, uh, my my opinion is that people have to suffer a lot more before, and and by then it's going to get worse. Uh, while we're able to save people on a on a case by case basis, we do that by destroying bad people with government. If, if someone wants to, all they care about is their their cushy job, their retirement, their phony reputation. When we put that in jeopardy. And that's just what we're going to do in Dyer's case. I'm getting ready to go after the prosecutors next. Uh, you see them change. You see them want to do right, but they really, it's not, they don't want to change to do right. They don't want to deal with something that's a rattlesnake that's going to bite them. And I, I think a lot of guys like Rick and, and you, Clay, need to, to sit down. And, and I remember talking this many years ago. A lot of the patriots having a conference and sitting down and really, you know, uh, honestly figuring out where America is and it, uh, it's from what I've heard of Texas, the Texas militia sounds like they're really doing something good. Uh, 
but as a nation and all as a whole, <laughs> I'm telling you, all I see is it going down the shitter quicker and quicker every day. It's I I've got to tell you a good example. We there was a tax uh, sovereignty movement in California a few years back. I went to and Larry B. Craft and Tommy Cryer wanted me to go, and I went down to this. Uh, and all the speakers got up, be cracked and all of them got up and talked about jurisdiction and all this. And I, I just sat back there and looked at this full big auditorium of people and thought about how many people were sitting on their butts watching TV or, or uh, out doing their own thing within three or four blocks of that auditorium. There's 50 times as many people within three blocks of that auditorium as the ones that were sitting in their vision. And I think you, you for the guys that want to organize and do these things, uh, and I, I, you know, I heard a lot of good again about the Texas militia. <laughs> Maybe you're doing it right. I'm not in. I'm not involved in that. So, but from where, where I'm seeing, I'll tell you what, what. Our nation has gone. It's already gone. It's, you know, we talk about repairing and stuff. This nation is so far gone. That stock market goes another time or two, and you wipe out that old old money. And. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm. Just, I, don't, I would hope everybody has a lot of faith. You know, I have faith in God, and so I. It's kind of hard to beat a guy like that. All right, let me. Uh, we've just got I mean, a few minutes left, uh, Ed. I really appreciate you being on my show. I want to ask Rick uh, one thing now. I've just come back to Texas after a forty-year self-imposed exile, traveling around this country, every state except Alaska and about nine countries and uh, I do that to get a research to be able to uh, write like Louis L'Amour if I write about something I've been there but uh, there's some uh, things happening in Texas my books Mystery Babylon the uh, Trevor Cameron terrorist hunter series of fiction acts which is more believable than my nonfiction uh, we've got uh, We've got the Texas Independence Movement here, Texas Nationalist Movement, and we've got uh, probably a hundred and uh, some odd, uh, or several thousand, hundred thousand people that have said we ought to secede. Now, Texas, uh, Texas always had that right since we came in. What about this? Uh, what about this secession movement? What about this independence movement, Rick? Uh, what do you What do you see happening with there? And again, my books are published by this group of people here. Printed by. Well, I communicate. Here. I communicate, Douglas, or play with a lot of different people, even uh, the secessionist people. Whether you're for secession or not, let's face it. Uh, Texas has the right to secede. It made that quite clear when it joined the Union. Now, I know there's some politicians out there that try to say, well, you know, uh, that just don't stand good today. Well, they'll try to come up with any excuse to try to tell you you can't do this and you can't do that in order to retain the control. Um, I don't really, what you call, dwell in the secession movement because that's not my passion. My passion is giving the people back their teeth, uh, our Second Amendment. That is my passion. And we all know that the Second Amendment has been really drained down and, and uh, diluted to uh, the right to keep and bear arms. Everybody forgot about the first part of it. It seems to be avoided, that militia thing, you know, and, and, and well, due to politicians that want to retain control, don't want to see people have their teeth back, they won't support the Second Amendment. They only want to support the right to keep and bear arms. That's because, well, if that's all you know about your Second Amendment, well, they're going to dilute it down. They're going to retain the control. Uh, my job is to educate people about the Second Amendment in its 
founding meaning. In other words, why the founders enumerated it for you. Had some people come up and say, well, the militia is a military. And I'm like, well, okay, explain why it's your Second Amendment. Uh, that's my job, is to make sure people learn about their teeth. Now, does that mean we bite? No. Look, folks, if you're well-armed, you're well-trained, it pretty well speaks for itself. It doesn't mean that you that have to use it. It doesn't mean that we endorse going around uh, grabbing politicians and stringing them up in the streets, things like that. We can we can handle that in different ways. Yeah, but only after only after where, a fair, where we lost our power and how to get that back. Only that after a fair is, trial, is right? The first step. Yeah. So you know, study your Second Amendment, folks. If you're interested in militia, there are professional groups that are growing across the United States. They're not all bad people. They're from every walk of life. Uh, they're black, they're brown, they're white, they're yellow. They're, they're of every race. The militia movement is not a racial order. Uh, matter of fact, we stand against those things. Why? Because it prompts people's freedom and liberty. That's why. So no, we do not endorse the KKK. We don't endorse the skinheads. We don't endorse groups like that. That's not what we do. And uh, hopefully people will learn about that. And they'll also look at Mr. Snook's side of the fence. He's working on the court system, folks. You got people working on militias. You got people working on the economy. You got whatever the passion is. Like I say, it's different roads that lead to the same highway. That's All amazing. right, we're out of time. Run thanks for listening, call. Rick. Thank you. I want you to put me in touch with the uh, uh, Texas militias, and we'll have some more guests on my show. And then I'll be talking to you in a few That's minutes. The Texas State Militia. Texas State Make Militia. Sure that you, yeah, the Texas State Militia and the Texas Militia are two different groups. Okay, get me in touch with the state. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. God bless. Angel, get your furry butt back in here.